Welcome to another micro learning video from vsjelvis.com. I am Jonas and today I'm going to show you what happens if you synthesize a design and implement it without using constraint files. Here I have a single file vsjel module which I'm going to open in VS Code so that we can take a look at the entity. And this is the ring buffer module which I've downloaded from one of my other blog posts how to create a ring buffer FIFO in VHDL. And you can download this file and this project and run it on your computer if you want by going to the video description and clicking the link which will take you to the blog post. And there you can look for the need the Molsim project files form and use this one to get the VHDL project. But I've already got it here and the only modification I've done is to give the generics specific values so that we can implement it as the top module and it has a bunch of in and out signals and that's good because we're going to see what happens with these signals when we implement it as a top module without any constraints. So just close this for now uh, and I'm going to go into IceCube 2, the design software from Lattice. I'm using this IceCube 2 because it's very quick to show you a demo but the concept is the same for Vivado or Quartus. It's going to be the same behavior so I'm just going to create a new project now and we're going to select in the ring buffer FIFO folder, it's already selected. And I'll just create a project. Let's name this one IceCube2 underscore proj. I'm going to select an FPJ which is large enough for this module. Just select one, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's good. I'm going to add the ring buffer FIFO VHDL module and click finish. And note that we have not selected any constraint files. I just created a new project now. I'm just going to go to tools and select run all to run through all of these implementation steps and through the synthesis, through the place and route and to, through the generate bitmap step. And will this work? Because I'm trying to implement it as the top module on the FPJ. So what will happen to the in and out signals? We haven't specified any pins or anything like that and no clock constraint, nothing at all. So what's going to happen now, there are no constraint files. It's gone through synthesis and it's now running the placer. And it seems like it's going to work. The router is running. And will it fail because there are no constraints files? Or will it somehow work? Make a guess because it's about to happen. <laughs> okay. There we go, the router is complete and it also generated the bitmap and we can see we have a programming file somewhere here because generate bitmap completed. So what happened now? What happened to the pins? Which pins are the signals mapped to? Well, let's go have a look here in the pin constraint editor. It has lots of different values here. And I'll tell you what, these signals, these are the VHDL signals on the left side here. And these are the pin locations on the FPJ, and these are random values. So the router has just picked some random pins which it finds useful for implementing or routing these signals to. Of course, this is not going to work if we try to run this FPJ because these are just random pins. So what is the use case of this? Why, why would, it, would we even want to do this? Well, I'm going to show you why. Because we, for example, have a look at the the um, uh, the synthesis log. So here we can see the device usage, design statistics, how many flip flops have it has been used, how many lookup tables, how many RAMs. There's one RAM, and so on. And we can also scroll down and get more information here or the pin names, just random pin names, and we can see how much. Uh, I always it using and all of this information is useful if you just want to check the module or test it. We can also um, for example have a look at the place and route output. Let's see if we can have the reports from the timing report for example here. So it, it has run some timing analysis and we can see there's a frequency here. So this is the uh, estimated frequency of the design because we didn't specify a clock constraint so these are just auto-generated constraints that made this frequency and by the way in Vivado you won't see this frequency it used to be the estimated frequency after synthesis in 
the older version of Xilinx, ISC, but they stopped doing that in Vivado. So you will go through a bit more pain to get this in Vivado. And that's because this is just an estimate, because of course, if you change the routing and change the pin numbers, this is going to change. This max frequency is going to change. But anyway, it's useful to see what's the range of this max frequency, because if you change something, for example, you can see that it goes up or down and it's use, use, useful to know which part of the spectrum we are at. So that's uh, useful enough, but also you can do more. You can, for example, um, if I open the synthesis tool behind all of this, we can just open it now. <laughs> Let me see. Okay, so there we go. It's going to run through the synthesis once more. This is Simplify Pro, but you can do this in Vivado too. So we can have a look at the RTL view. So this is the routed netlist. You can see, um, or the unrouted netlist, we can see which parts the VHDL code has turned into, and we can see the technology view. So we can get a lot of information and see actually exactly what primitives this design is using. And that is useful because uh, if you're designing a module, you, you don't have to wait until you have the complete the top module, the complete design before you synthesis, uh, synthesize it. So you can run through the implementation steps and all of that without specifying any constraint files. And I usually do that. And sometimes, for example, in this ring buffer folder with the ring buffer file, the module, I have just uh, a Vivado project or a Lattice IceCube 2 project or whatever besides the file that I'm testing. So that's a super useful feature of most FPGA implementation tools. You can actually run through the whole implementation process without even specifying a constraint files, a constraint file or anything at all, just to get an indication of how your module is doing and what kind of hardware it will turn into. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, go to vhdlwiz.com to see more tutorials and articles about VHDL and FPGA development.